Hi, my name is Ken, and this is part four of Let's Code a MUD in C++11. Uh, in parts two and three, we talked a little theory. We talked about lambdas and then R values. Uh, so now let's uh, get back to coding. Let's, let's uh, work on our program. Uh, so in this part, what I'm going to work on is I'm going to work on the connection class we started writing in part three, and I'm going to add some output capability to it. I'm going I'm to make some ability for us to send some data out over the socket, just just like the equivalent of a hello world, just to when someone connects over Telnet to say, hi, how are you, or something like that. Um, so um, what we're going to do is first we're going to start replacing sockets here in the in the server interface with our connection class. Our, our connection class is going to encapsulate the socket. Um, but before we even finish doing that, I'm going to make uh, two changes, two small changes that are related to C++11 features. Uh, the first is I'm going to change this vector.pushback. I'm going to change that to emplaceback. Uh, so this is something that's new in C++11. Uh, and we were talking in the last part, in, in part three, that uh, when we did this, we, we actually had to create a temporary of our object and then move it into the vector. Um, before there were moves, this would have to be a copy. Uh, and copies are expensive in C++. Uh, so what, what you might have done once upon a time is actually make this a vector of pointers uh, or uh, a vector of some smart pointer class from Boost or from some other library. Um, but what we can do here is instead of copying or even instead of moving, which would be more efficient in C++11, um, but what's even better than moving is just putting the object in the right place the first time. And that's what in place back gets us. Um, it gets us the ability to construct the object in its uh, desired memory location. Um, and then if the object has to move again because there's a vector resize, then it can be moved or copied. But just the first time, we're going to construct the object in the right location. Uh, so in place back here, it'll take um, you know all of your constructor argu arguments, uh, and it'll call the constructor for the type of the vector. So we're just going to change that to connection. Uh, so it'll call the, the connection constructor with IO service, which is what we want. Um, the second change I'm going to make here is I'm going to change the socket type to auto. So auto is a new keyword in C++11. Actually, it's an old keyword given a new use. Uh, the old keyword of auto is uh, completely different from this, and I don't know that it's really used that much, if at all, anymore. Uh, but what this lets us do is this lets us do some type deduction. So instead of having to specify the type here uh, for our local variable, it's just going to, the compiler is going to determine what the correct type is uh, from the expression we're trying to assign it. Uh, and that gives us a little a little bit of user friendliness. Um, it lets us avoid having to write out long uh, type names like iterators. Um, and also it lets us um, prevent ourselves from shooting ourselves in the foot by uh, accidentally doing a, an implicit uh, cast or conversion operation. Um, so this, this will definitely be the type of the result of this expression. Um, so, uh, we're going to do that. Oh, but it's connection now, not socket. It's going to be connections.back. Um, we're still using a reference here. We're using the ampersand to mean we want a reference to the back of the, coll the collection of connections. Um, auto can have reference or not reference, and it can also have const or not const. Uh, so it, just think of auto as replacing the actual type name, the, the class or, or the basic type uh, there. Okay, so connection, connection. Um, and what we're also gonna do here is we're gonna put in a connection.start. Um, what this is going to do is when, when the, the connection gets constructed up here, it's actually not usable yet because it's not accepted yet. Um, we've, we've got to wait for this async accept to complete, to, to call the callback before the connection can actually start reading and writing. So um, I, don't, I don't really like constructing an object that's not usable. Uh, that, that violates uh, a, a key principle of C++ called RAII or resource acquisition is initialization. Uh, when you have an object, it should be initialized. It should be ready to use. Uh, but in this case, it's going to be a necessary evil. Uh, and we're going to actually address it a little later on also. Uh, the other thing is because uh, we're calling async accept, it still wants a socket, so we've got to give it a socket. 
Um, all right, let's go to the connection class now. All right, so first we needed to give it a socket. Um, turn M socket, and that's gonna be a reference to the socket type. Uh, so this is a getter. Uh, you might ask, uh, why not just make the member variable public? Um, so to me, I, I would rather uh, use a function here. Uh, and this is going to be zero overhead because this is inlined. So this is going to have the, the same effect of anyone calling socket. Is, is, it's going to be as if you had put uh, object.msocket. Uh, so it's, it's not introducing any overhead. And this is, um, to me, it's a little more of an API. It's saying this is the interface that I want you to use. Uh, so just it makes a little more logical sense to me to do it this way. Um, and then we need that start function. So um, this is just going to say, for now, we'll just do some debugging. We'll say connection started. Um, but we could you know, start up our interface, do our reading and writing, uh, ask the user to log in, all that kind of stuff we, we would start doing here. Um, so let's compile this. Um, oh, no, not yet. Uh, so we need that type def in the connection class, not in the server class. Let's move this socket type. Um, oops. Okay. Moving the type def to here. Um, and also, let's see, we need to include connection.hpp. And is there anything else we missed? Well, I guess we'll find out when we try to compile. Um, yes, what I miss. Oh, right, we have to rename. This is m connections now, it's not m sockets. Okay. Um, did I misspell it? Yeah, of course I did. Okay, uh, so we are creating a new connection, doing async accept, and then when it's accepted, we're starting the connection. So let's watch that happen. Um, we'll do telnet. Okay, so it was accepting the new connection and now the connection started. Okay, that's great. That's what we expected. The next thing we wanna try and do is we wanna try and get that connection started over to the telnet connection. We wanna communicate that data over the socket. Um, so let's see if we can do that. So that means that in the connection class here, um, we wanna be able to write this out over the socket. Uh, so the way I'm gonna do that is I'm actually gonna keep, I, I wanna have a stream-like interface because it's good from a, a type safety point of view. Um, and rather than having to use something like a string stream, um, what I'm actually gonna use is, I'm gonna use actually a, an O stream. So I'm gonna have an object called M output stream and it's gonna be of type standard O stream. And I'm able to do this because BoostASIO provides uh, an object, a, a class uh, called StreamBuff that I can use as a backing to that um, output stream uh, that then BoostASIO knows how to use to do read and write calls. So um, up here, when I say, when I construct the output stream, I'm gonna give it a pointer to the output buffer. Okay, and then I'll be able to use this stream as a, a stream-like interface. Um, but, so what, what's this doing? This stream is, is giving us an interface to put data into the buffer. It's not yet actually writing the buffer out over the connection. We still have to do that. Uh, so I'm gonna make an async write call here. Async write is a free function. It's not a uh, part of a class. Um, and it's gonna want the socket. It's gonna want the buffer. And it's gonna want a completion handler. Um, So we're gonna capture this as usual. Um, and also as usual, we're gonna have an error code. And also a size T. Uh, so what this is gonna do is, if there is some kind of error, it's possible that uh, only uh, some of the data was transferred. And this uh, second argument is gonna tell us how much of the data actually was transferred. Now, I am not gonna pay attention to it because um, that's only gonna happen if there was some kind of error. And TCP at the protocol level actually has uh, retries and, and good error handling. So I'm gonna assume that if TCP couldn't get the job done, 
uh, I'm just going to drop the connection. So um, we'll say if not error, uh, write completed successfully. So this will be on the server side. On the server, we'll see that the write was completed successfully. And on the, uh, the Telnet client, we'll see that connection started message. So we're putting the, the message in the buffer uh, by using the stream interface. And then we're writing the buffer to the socket and we're getting told when that's completed. All right, so this ought to compile now. Um, no, except it doesn't. Why doesn't it? Um, use of deleted function connection. Okay, so this is our the connections move constructor, the implicit move constructor that the compiler was was creating for us uh, that we talked about in part three. Um, and we can no longer do that. Why can't we do that anymore? Because it's uh, the default definition would be ill formed use of deleted function. Okay, so stream buff. Stream buff doesn't have a move constructor. So uh, now connection doesn't have a move constructor. Um, Honestly, this is for the better uh, because we're going to end up having a lot of asynchronous calls uh, in, in this class. And if connection were to move uh, because of a vector resize, then all of a sudden we'd be getting seg faults on our asynchronous callbacks because they'd be referring to a this that isn't there anymore. Uh, so uh, not just for, for the stream buff sake, but also for this class, we're, we're going to make it non-movable. And it is non-movable. We just saw from the, the compiler error that the lack of uh, a stream buff move constructor means that by default this is now non-movable. But because it's non-copyable and non-movable, that, that puts us in a, a little bit of a dilemma because it means we can't use it in a vector. Uh, a vector is backed by an array, and if the array needs to grow because the vector gets bigger, uh, the vector class has to be able to move or copy all of the old elements from the, the old array into the new array. Uh, and so uh, without a move constructor, that's just never going to happen. Um, so instead, we're just going to change this to list. List is a, uh, a doubly linked list. Um, so all of the objects will be constructed individually, and the list will be composed of pointers uh, between those objects. So the objects will never have to move or copy, regardless of how the list grows, because the, the, the list will grow by creating a new object and then um, putting a pointer to that in um, in the last uh, object. Okay, um, so we change vector to list. We're gonna change vector to list up here. Uh, and just that one change, uh, because we no longer need to use the move constructor, that should get us, yes, okay. All right, uh, so let's run it again and let's connect again. Yeah, okay, this time we got some data. Uh, it told us connection started. So, uh, and it said write completed successfully on the server side. So the server was able to send that connection started string uh, across over the Telnet session uh, and complete successfully. Okay, that's great. Um, that's what we set out to do. So let's let's wrap up. Let's look at what we did. So we, we, we put some output logic in uh, using a stream and using a stream buff. Uh, and then tell you what in the next episode we're going to talk about uh, we're going to we're going to expand this a little more we're going to add some double buffering for our output because of a limitation with async write uh, but we won't talk about that right now we'll wait till the next episode we'll just right now celebrate our uh, our completed ability to to write to a connection um, okay uh, my name is Ken and this was let's code a mud in C++ 11 part 4 um, connection output uh, and thank you for watching.